Guten Tag, WAP. This is Mr. Linegar. Let's make history today as we go over Unit 1, Day 6. We're going to talk about Latin America during the post-classical period. We'll talk about the Aztecs and the Incas. But before we get started, let's get started with our daily punishment. Heavy, smaller babies may be delivered by a stork, but heavier babies need a crane. <laughs> stork, crane, they're both bows. <laughs> All right, your key terms for today. Hutsapuro. Quetzalcoatl, Aztec, Inca, Cusco, Machu Picchu, Incan Roads, Inti, Barocho, Chinampa, and Terrace Farming. We're going to go over the political characteristics of the Aztec and Incas, the religious characteristics of the Aztecs and Incans, and the economic and social characteristics of, you guessed it, the Aztecs and Incans. Let's get started with the early Aztecs. They were known as the Mexica people. They were located in central Mexico around the mid-13th century. They're going to settle in Tenochtitlan, which is modern-day Mexico City. That's a different city than Teotihuacan. They'll settle around 1345. The Aztecs will become an empire. They're going to uh, quickly conquer uh, surrounding tribes around them. They'll run military campaigns against neighboring societies up until the mid-15th century. They'll rule over 12 million people and most of Mesoamerica. They'll demand tribute from the people they conquer. Uh, the tribute obligations were very oppressive. The Aztecs were not the nicest civilization. The emperor had no bureaucracy or administration. They would just demand tribute, like goods, wealth, from their 489 subject territories that they had conquered. In the Mexican social structure, the warriors were at the top of the social structure, the soldiers, the fighters. Uh, women had no public role, but they did enjoy high honor as mothers of warriors. Priests were also ranked really high up. They were the elite. The priests were the ones that did the bloodletting, the human sacrifice, because the Aztecs did a lot of human sacrifice in their temples. Cultivators and slaves uh, would pay tribute and provide labor services for public works. There was a large number of slaves. A lot of times they worked as domestic servants and sometimes in agriculture. You also had craftsmen and merchants. They did have some prestige and the Aztecs did trade with parts of Central America. One of the agricultural systems the Aztecs develop is the Chinapa. Their capital of Tenochtitlan was located in the middle of a lake. So they had like bridges connecting it and to grow their crops, they like had these kind of like floating islands uh, in the middle of their lake, small rectangular areas of fertile arable land to grow crops in the shallow lake beds in the Valley of Mexico. And there's a little picture to show, ch show Chinapa. So this is one of the things that they did to feed their people. Let's talk about the Aztecs religion. They did do uh, ritual bloodletting. It was common to all societies. Their major gods were Huitzapato and Quetzalcoatl. Uh, Huitzapato was the war god. They would offer human sacrifices uh, to make sure that they did good in war. This is kind of different than some other anthropomorphic polytheistic society where you offered like animal sacrifice to get good crops. They would offer human sacrifice to be successful in their wars. They had large temples at the center of Tenochtitlan where hundreds of thousands of people be sacrificed to their war god. There was another god, Quetzalcoatl. He was considered the protector of humans. He was tricked by some gods. He fell and kind of disappeared. Aztecs believed that someday he would come back, uh, return to the people, and be kind, generous. Uh, one of the problems the Aztecs had when Cortez came, uh, some people thought that he was Quetzalcoatl. Our next society is the Incas. The Aztecs were located in the Mexico Valley. The Incas were located in Peru. In the Ande they were an Andean civilization. They emerged in the area of Cusco in Peru. They originated as a city-state, but will soon uh, conquer other areas. They're going to have a wide range of expansion by 1438. They're going to be a pretty large empire. They will grant some tolerance. For some of the areas they conquer or take over, the local nobles will go to the capital. They'll be educated in Inca governmental system, and they'll go back to govern under the Incas. They'll go back to their homeland. 
Uh, for the Inca Empire, they first settled around the Lake Titicaca, among other people. They built a huge empire stretching 4,000 kilometers from north to south. They relied on an uh, empire with military and a bureaucracy. Uh, for their bureaucrats, they had a writing system which was really unique. It was called a kapu. A kapu was a way to uh, keep records. It was basically a string. And depending on how many knots you tied and what kind of knot you tied, that was how you kept records. Kind of similar to Nebraska's. Uh, it was used to keep track of information. They had uh, two capitals, Cusco and Machu Picchu. Uh, Cusco had 300,000 people in the late 15th century. Machu Picchu was there hidden in the mountains, and it was the last retreat, retreat of the Incas when the Spanish were taking them over. One of the things the Incas did to connect their empire was they built Inca roads <coughs> to go from north to south. Runners would carry messages across the empire. Uh, the Inca roads were very advanced. Uh, it was paved with stone, shaded by trees. Both the Aztecs and the Incas did not have anything past Neolithic technology, however. Both of them did not develop metallurgy, which is going to be one of the reasons why the Spanish will be able to take them over. The biggest reason is disease. This right here is a recreation of the Kapu. This right here shows the Inca Empire and the Inca roads. Pretty impressive. In the Inca society, there was no large merchant class, not much specialization. There was no private property for the Incas. The government owned everything. Sometimes we call them like proto-socialist. The chief ruler was considered a, as descendant from the sun gods. After death, he was mummified. When a new ruler was chosen for the Incas, they would get out all the mummies from the previous rulers and they would parade them down, like, you know, in their capital city. Aristocrats and priests were uh, considered high up there. The Incas had some human sacrifice, but it was not as much as the Aztecs. The peasants would deliver portions of their products to the bureaucrats. And like I said, the society was ruled as a socialist type of centralized state, no private property. But again, the Incas were somewhat tolerant to the people they conquered and took over, much more tolerant than the Aztecs. For their agricultural system, they did something called terrace farming. It's where you plant crops on sides of hills and mountains. Uh, you plant on graduated land to build terraces into the slopes. You kind of see these terraces right here. It will decrease soil erosion. It was used by the Incans, the Chinese, and the Japanese. And it is going to help them have enough food to thrive as a civilization. For their religion, their major gods were Inti and Brocho. Uh, the sun god was Inti. The creator god was Brocho. They would sacrifice animals, agricultural products like crops, sometimes humans. Uh, they would sacrifice soldiers, uh, enemy soldiers, unblemished children. They would do this a lot in festivals and rituals. Again, not as much as the Aztecs, but there was some sacrifice. The Inca religion was pretty uh, interesting. They had an idea of sin, the concept of sin. They had an idea of the afterlife based on you, you're either rewarded or your punishment. They had an idea of absolving your sins, confession through confession and penance. All right, guys, that's all I have for today for Latin American civilization. Until next time, d -d 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 deuces, deuces, deuces.